Goldman Sachs isn't used to failing. But in the last few years, it's lost billions from consumer lending, which some have called a strategic and financial fail. Here's how one of Wall Street's smartest banks went from we think we can build a very profitable business to we did too much too quickly. Consumer lending only accounts for about 3% of the company's revenue. So this is not like disaster for Goldman. But what it is, is a bad look for Goldman, right? And it raises questions about, was there some flawed decision making that was happening? When Goldman announced it was entering the consumer space. Goldman Sachs moving from Wall Street to Main Street. It was a big deal. The idea of Goldman being a disruptor in such a large financial space with new technology and new hires, it was fascinating. Everybody cared about it. Other consumer lenders, other big banks cared about it. In 2016, Goldman launched its first consumer product, its Marcus High Yield Savings Account. Then it rolled out personal loans, which many consumer banks saw as a potential threat. There were tons of fintechs and other small startups that were essentially offering personal loans. But that was nowhere near a risk to banks in the credit card space as Goldman was. The investing community, however, was skeptical. Nobody thought that Goldman was going to succeed. It was more about a fascination. Wow, Goldman Sachs, some of the smartest people in the room are expanding this big market. What are they going to do? Goldman built its consumer business from scratch by hiring experienced executives from the consumer lending world, the tech sector, and its own bank. The company said one advantage it had over other consumer banks that had been in the space for decades was its technology. We're very good at algorithmic trading. We're very good at risk management. We're very good at digital distribution. In 2019, Goldman launched its first credit card with a splashy Apple partnership. We call it Apple Card. It's a very competitive space, but here you had Goldman entering the space that other retail banks have been just steeped in for so long. And from there, what you saw, what we all saw, was a pretty fast ramping up of consumer lending efforts. In 2020, Goldman rolled out Marcus Pay, an installment payment product with JetBlue. It won a bid for the General Motors credit card, and in 2021, it almost poached the JetBlue credit card from Barclays. That was a moment where it was evident that, okay, they, they are a really serious player in this space. This new push was led by David Solomon, who became CEO in 2018. David during this time period was very much on board with this idea of we're either going to be a real consumer lender, we're going to offer a variety of services and products, or we're just not going to do this at all. We're a big bank, we have a big balance sheet, we've got a big capability to invest in technology and therefore to invest in disruption. Some executives in the consumer business disagreed with decisions the company was making, and they began leaving. It almost became like a science experiment. Those were the words that were described to me as what the consumer effort evolved to. One example of this was a new cloud platform to manage consumer products. Others within the consumer division felt that it was a terrible idea, it was costly, it, it would result in and did result in delays of things being rolled out. Around the summer of 2021, the firm struck a deal with home improvement lender GreenSky, despite red flags raised by partners at Goldman. There was a concern about we won't have direct access to these consumers because it's not like GreenSky gives them the loan directly. You have these middlemen, con these contractors in between. They were concerned about the price. Goldman's shareholders were also getting frustrated. As time went on, there were more questions. Why are they loading on more consumer activities? Why are they tr trying to do so much at the same time? All the different consumer products were also incurring a lot of expenses. You have the expenses of building out these different products, staffing up to do it, and the expenses associated with being in line with what your regulators are expecting. That all pushes out the time period during which the consumer business would reach profitability even further out into the future. Those concerns grew as the investment banking business slowed in 2022 from its record high the year before. All of a sudden, it mattered if there was a business unit with a lot of expenses, and especially if that business unit wasn't really contributing in a good way to earnings. In the fall of 2022, Goldman reorganized, moving a big chunk of consumer lending into a separate unit. This revealed how much it was costing the company. I think it was probably bleeding money for a lot bigger and longer than they had expected. Following an internal review, Goldman decided to scale back its consumer ambitions. 
the bank ended talks for potential new credit card programs with T-Mobile, Hawaiian Airlines, and Expedia. It has stopped issuing personal loans, paused plans to roll out a Marcus checking account, and is trying to sell GreenSky. It's also looking to offload its General Motors and Apple partnerships. Earlier this year, it began speaking with American Express to gauge its interest in taking over the partnership. This massive retreat from consumer lending began after just six years. So did Goldman wait too long to pull the plug, or not long enough? It would have been a bigger deal if they didn't pull the plug. The consumer foray was a fail, but it was a manageable fail. A Goldman spokesperson declined to comment. Despite the missteps, the bank still gained nearly $150 billion in consumer deposits and has said it has no plans to stop accepting those. It's also possible that Goldman could have seen success down the road if it hadn't pulled back. When Morgan Stanley got into wealth management, it had a lot of critics about that strategy. And many years later, it is now paying off. So the same path could have very well played out for Goldman. Moving forward, the company says, We're extremely focused on the growth of our asset and wealth management platform. I think shareholders are more relieved that Goldman is going back to its roots. My understanding from speaking with executives at Goldman is that even if it results in them taking a loss on the pieces of the business that they're selling off, their investors are looking towards the future and see a future where Goldman is not a consumer lender.